we are continuing our discussion on computer programming for the iterative solvers. In the last session, we have looked into Jacobi solvers and we will see how this can be modified into cost cycle solvers. The examples uh, will be given on a similar uh, problem which we are considering during Jacobi solver that is a, a square block in which we have to solve Laplacian 2D Laplacian equation and all the boundary conditions are specified as the essential boundary conditions there. So, we look into the Gossel iterative method the um, uh, matrix equation it is very, simi very si similar as the Jacobi method except look into it it is we have to solve matrix A x is equal to B A is diagonally dominant we have to do the exactly same thing that start with a gauge value x is equal to x 0 and then update x, but this update instead of what we have done in Jacobi what we will presently do in, in Gossel is uh, that for the upper row terms for the terms for which we already have an updated value of x available we use the updated values and for the terms in the lower rows where the x is still the gauge value that has not been updated we use the gauge values or what we can see say that for getting updated value of one particular element of the x matrix we use the most recent values of all other x's. So, in a sense programming will be uh, actually easy because we do not have to use the old value at during the iterations it is will update the uh, one variable and that will be used uh, in, in subsequent iterations we will we'll look into it I will show you couple of examples one a C code which we will uh, discuss right now and then we will see a Fortran code where uh, much simpler implementation has been done. Well, so x is updated like that and then till convergence we have to see that the ma uh, maximum value of x k minus x k plus 1 the difference of any element of x in two iteration levels and the maximum of that difference maximum the absolute value of that difference is less than a small number epsilon. In a sense it is very same as very much similar to Jacobi method and for programming also we have to sum of uh, find sum of all terms in each row and loop over sum over all rows to up update each element of vector h. So, there is a lot of summation operation summation in each row for finding that particular expression uh, summation on each row for finding this particular expression this summation as well as there is this this is summed over one particular i and similarly for all i's for all the rows we have to do this summation. So, there are basically two rows of summations here and then we, this has to be looped for a large value of k till we get convergence and the new x which is computed will be uh, will will use for computing of new in this new x we will use the updated available values of x. However, the older x has to be stored because we have to check the difference from the older value of x and the new value of x and what is the maximum of that absolute difference for checking the convergence. So, we will we'll quickly look into a Gauss seidel code. So, it starts with all including all the uh, header and time files and then uh, there is a mesh which is basic which basically gives pointer of i j value in a uh, Cartesian mesh to one particular row of the matrix equation. And now, what we are doing here we are uh, so what we are uh, we have to do here is that uh, write down the initialize everything with the 0 and then put the right boundary condition uh, define the right coefficients of matrix A it is a pentadiagonal matrix with the diagonal term minus 4 and all of diagonal 0 uh, except few terms which are 1 and substitute the values of A for the boundary conditions and then put the boundary conditions in the B matrix. And so, we get A and B fixed here, then we start with uh, we have to give the desired value of, value of accuracy which is epsilon 
that the user gives us gives it as an input and uh, the program reads this value the initial value is x is equal to 0 and with x is equal to uh, the all the x's are 0 x 0. So, x 0 which is given as x 1 the gauge value is defined as x 1 and sorry the updated value is defined as x 1 and gauge value is x 0, but we are initializing updated value x 1 is equal to 0 later we will change updated we uh, uh, assign the updated value to the gauge value. So, the initial gauge value becomes 0 and till we have an error which is greater than epsilon. Initially, we have given error uh, defined error to be twice of epsilon and during calculation we will find out error till error is greater than epsilon and till we have less than 1500 iterations. We uh, follow these loops. So, um, and there is there are some comments for checking the uh, compu uh, computational time required for that. So, what we are doing here is that that we are doing a sum for each sum of a x for each non diagonal terms until j is less than i. So, for all the non diagonal terms above the particular row is summed and this is stored at sum and this is for one particular value of i. So, there is a loop over j, j is equal to i, j is equal to 0, j is less than i and there is another loop j is equal to i to j is less than uh, n. So, this is sum in a particular sum for a particular row and this sum is done for all the rows and we can check that when doing this sum we are using x 1, x 1 is the updated most updated value for the rows above the this part one particular row x 1 is the updated value during this iteration for the rows below this particular row x 1 is the value which has been updated in the last iteration which has gone as the gauge value now. So, when we are calculating updating one particular element of x as x 1 we are using all the recent last recent available values or last updated values as the gauge value. We are not using the gauge values which is the updated value in the last iteration. Whatever has been updated during this iteration is also being as used as gauge value and we, we calculate b is equal to x, x 1 i is equal to b minus sum by a i i. So, this is done for one particular x 1 and similar and then we calculate what is error, what is the maximum value of x 1 minus x 0 for all the elements and uh, see, check that check we will check what, what is the value of error and well error is greater than epsilon this loop will continue that means, count will be added by plus 1 and the control will, will be shifted here. So, for the other values of k for the other values uh, like for the higher values of the iteration count is less than 1500 this will continuing iterating till it gets epsilon error is uh, less than epsilon or error is less, less than epsilon is defined as something say 10 to the power minus 8 till we get error is less than less than 10 to the power minus 8. The only difference is if we look into Jacobi there it we have used x 0, but in Gus Seidel we are using x 1 which is the most updated value. So, it will also be uh, apparent that as we are using updated values during the iterations the convergence will be faster and we have uh, looked into convergence rate convergence factor of the matrices and uh, observed that Gauss circle has a faster convergence rate than Jacobi and we will uh, demonstrate it via using these codes also. So, <coughs> the next uh, method is what is called a successive over relaxation method. In successive over relaxation method everything is same except the x variable is not updated during the iteration directly as a Gauss cycle. Rather we get a semi iteration semi guest semi level guess value at using Gauss cycle which is x k plus 1 star which is not the exact iteration value, but it is a semi iterated value and we will see that the dis difference between x k plus 1 minus the old x k. So, this is difference between x k plus 1 this is x k plus 1 star this is x k plus 1 star minus x k what is this difference and we multiply this difference by omega which is greater than 1 for s o r 
for successive world relaxation the value of omega is greater than 1. So, we increase the if x k plus 1 star is the updated value we use increase the iteration value to x uh, x k plus 1 star from x k plus 1 star to x k plus 1 by multiplying it with a value greater than 1. So, the marching towards convergence is faster and the code is also very similar exactly similar steps are followed until we do the update step. In the update step we use the fact that the updated x is 1 minus omega into old x plus omega into the changes uh, into b i minus sum by a i i. So, uh, this, this update statement is different uh, apart from that the entire code is similar. So, what we can do? We can connect to a server and see how these codes are behaving for one at least for one particular problem and then we will move to the, the steepest descent type of methods. So, here I am connected to a server which has uh, C and Fortran compilers. I will show you some examples via Fortran code and this is my b vector I am solving x is equal to b this is my b vector sorry. So, uh, vi this is my uh, what happened? Just one second. So, I have a small matrix generation code which I uh, will run to generate the matrix and uh, this 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 code uh, generates both a a for x is equal to b both a and b for a uh, this is for a 3D Laplacian equation. So if I look into my b vec, uh, I'll look into the b vector. This has basically uh, 100,000 lines. Why should it be VI A matrix? Just one second. So, b vector should have 100 points, 1000 points only g for trend. go to some so i'll take a b vector as well as a matrix which has G. So, B vector has 1353 columns that means the uh, matrix is 13, 1353 into 1353 matrix and the B is a 1353 into one uh, uh, ve vector. So, if I 
compile Jacobi and run it. The dimension of the matrix is 1353, it is a square matrix, so I will giving 1 as the dimensional input. And we can see that the iteration number 330, 334, the error is reducing as the iteration number is increasing. Sorry. And uh, this will go for a large number of iterations, we can find it out more than few, few thousand iterations it will go for. So, here I have not given that the iteration count cannot be greater than 15000, 1500 because this is a large problem and it will take lot more iterations to convert. Wait. It takes a large number of iterations as evident and the value reduces and finally, it will reduce below a small number. So, it came to convergence when the error is less than 10 to the power minus 9 here and it took 3, 3 to 8 7 iterations. So, if I look into the Jacobi code, I have specified epsilon, I am not asked ep from ep uh, the epsilon from the um, uh, user, but it is specified as 1 e 10 to the power, the epsilon is specified as 1 e 10 to the power minus 8. So, if the value is less than 10 to the power minus 8, the iterations will uh, be done. And now, we, we do the same thing using a Gauss cycle and the iteration level is same. So, if I run the same code and this was 3000 more than 3000 uh, steps, if I run the same same uh, problem using Gauss cycle again 1353 at the number of mesh points and let us see how many iterations does it take. So, it took 1641 iteration have the number of iterations. The only change in Gauss cycle code is that that when we are doing this calculation of multiplying a, a with x, I am not using the uh, older value of x, I am using the most updated value of x. This is the most updated value of x here, but if I look into the Jacobi, when I am I am using two x's, one is the old x, another is the new x and when I am updating x, I am finding out the old new x based on the older values of x, I am not using the most updated values of x. Okay. The Jacobi, uh, the Gauss cycle, this is the up, up, update line in Gauss cycle and this is how it is being updated x is finding out an x 1 new and b minus a x by a i. The same thing can be looked into an a. So, I remember that it took around 1640 iterations for uh, uh, Jacobi. The same thing can be looked into an uh, s o r and where there is the parameter alpha x is equal to x old x plus new x minus old x into alpha. So, alpha represents omega here and alpha we read from the we ask the uh, SOR value we read from the user. So, if we write the if we uh, uh, run this code alpha maybe we give 
1.3 as alpha and see how does it converge. So, it converges with 927 iterations where the Gauss cycle took 1640 iterations and Jacobi took 3400 iterations much larger number of iterations. Now, if we, we know that there should be an optimum omega on which or optimum SOR factor on which we should get the maximum convergence rate. So, at 1.1 we are getting 1.3 we got 9.27. So, let, let us give alpha is equal to 1.6 and see if it still improves. Now, we can see that it has gone much more than 927 iterations and the values are actually if I close it the value is actually not reducing it, it has become a constant. So, the solution is actually not converging with 1.6. So, we have gone beyond the optimum SOR value. Let us run this with 1.4. Remember at 1.3 it was 927. So, it is 760, it is improved than 1.3 and if we run it at 1.5 SOR 1.5, you 720 plus something at 1.4. it goes to it is again does not converge. So, and we can see that this is actually oscillating alpha is 2.38 then 1.7 then 1.19 and then again goes to 2.38. If the equation system at all converges the uh, not alpha the, uh, the error should always reduce error should mo monotonically reduce, but it is not reducing. So, it is not converging. So, somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5 is the optimum SOR after which the equation the system starts diverging. So, there is a value of omega which is greater than 1 for which we get the minimum number of iterations. This these things can be verified by numerical experiments like this you run with different values of omega and see where you are getting the best performance or you have to look into the iteration matrix for SOR the G matrix and its spectral radius and from there you can or the uh, spectral radius of the Jacobi matrix or Gaussian matrix using that spectral radius you can specify what is the optimum value of omega there is a very nice formula for that we have discussed it earlier. So, now we will also uh, look on the uh, other uh, programming of few other uh, methods and I will quickly go on computer programming for steepest descent method. So, what is the steepest descent algorithm that is you start with a guess value x 0, then k is for different uh, iteration level k is equal to 0 1 to compute r k is equal to b minus x k, then compute a parameter alpha which is r k transpose r k dot product between the r and r k transpose a r k and update x as x k plus 1 is x k plus alpha k r k and if r k is less than epsilon set k is equal to uh, uh, sorry if r k is greater than epsilon if r k is it is not less than if r k is greater than epsilon if the value is greater than something 
then go to 2 and repeat this loop else you will say that the iterations are converged. So, now we will see how we can write a computer program for this. So, what are the steps involved major computation operational steps? There is a matrix vector multiplication here A has to be multiplied with x. There is a vector vector multiplication here r has to be dotted there is a dot product of r and r and there is another matrix vector multiplication which is a r and then a dot product of the resultant vector with the uh, with a vector r. So, there are three vector vector two vector vector multiplication and two matrix vector multiplications and major operational steps uh, will be uh, carrying out this multiplications because a into r means I have to multiply uh, when I am finding a r I have to for each row of a I have to multiply each element with each of the r vectors. So, there has to be two loops one loop is for multiplication of for one particular row and another loop is for multiplication of, uh, of doing this for over number of uh, uh, number of rows and vector vector multiplication is also I have to have one loop which multiplying each element with the corresponding element of another vector and then summing them up. So, now if we look into the C program. So, before this uh, before we go to the actual program we know that there are two vector vector multiplication which is a multiplication of A with x. So, we write a small program for that and you can see that there are two loops one loop is for multiplying within the uh, uh, within a row multiplications of within a row finding the results for a row and then doing it for all the other loop rows. So, all rows. So, for one particular row uh, in one this is for one particular row where each element of that row is being multiplied by corresponding element of that vector and then do is doing this uh, loop running this loop over all the rows of the particular matrix and then there is a vector vector product which is only one loop there is another matrix vector product which is there is a vector matrix product right which is again sorry uh, so which will interestingly have a matrix vector product and then there is another loop which is doing a vector vector multiplication. So, this is a matrix vector product which is a matrix into vector product the this particular matrix in uh, vector is again coming as the multiplication of two vectors. So, we have seen that that there are two vector vector products two matrix matrix product and one matrix vector uh, two matrix vector product and one for one matrix vector product the product is further multiplied by a vector. So, we have read these three subroutines are written previously and similarly the uh, mesh file is defined for the pointers and we get the coefficient matrix A, give the boundary conditions, change the matrix accordingly as per boundary conditions so that it looks like a symmetric matrix because steepest descent is only applicable for symmetric matrices. And then R is equal to B minus multiplication of A x, R is equal to B minus A x and then we set an accuracy epsilon. So, this is for uh, we start with x is equal to 0 guess value and get r is equal to b minus a x and then we update x calculate alpha by uh, r dot r divided by r dot a r p is the product of a r p is calculated as multiplication of the between the vector uh, r and the matrix a. So, then we update x and r and we check that whether error the new difference between old x and new x is less than a value epsilon if it is so the control goes here and the loop uh, goes on. So, it is this is how a steepest descent type of program is written and now we can look into uh, two other projection methods one is minimum residual method where very similar to the algorithm also looks similar to steepest descent except alpha is cal calculated as p transpose r by p transpose p and p is equal to a r. So, here uh, sorry, 
here we need to have one matrix vector product rather to start with two matrix vector product and then this there is a vector vector multiplication there is a vector vector multiplication again we have to do one matrix vector product. So, there are two matrix vector product this can be found before the iterations for only x is equal to 0 because later r is updated as that and then there are two vector vector products. So, we have to write similar subroutines for that. And the next method, the next method is a steepest descent, uh, uh, is a residue norm steepest descent method, where the uh, there is a again a vector matrix vector product, but now with a transpose. So, we have to be stored in transpose form and found the product. This seems little uh, more involved in terms of computational processes also, because when we store a matrix, we store the data row wise and it is using right pointers we can use a contiguous chunk of memory which is which will be very easy for the processors to access. But when we look into a transpose the memory ordering is changed and the processor has to or access different locations of the memory it might be a slower process if we consider a large matrix uh, in distributed systems or in uh, graphics card accelerated systems. However, so there is a uh, one matrix vector product this is uh, uh, L 2 norm is basically what is a vector uh, 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 vector vector product and this is a matrix vector product to uh, and then a vector vector product. So, there are two operations one vector vector product V 2 square A V A V is also vector vector product, but finding A V is a matrix vector product and A V is already found out. So, we do not have to do anything there. So, we have uh, two matrix vector operation product and one and also two vector vector product and the programs program has to be modified accordingly, but you, you can try if you start, try start with a steepest descent program you can modify it accordingly to get residue norm and minimum residual program the basic structure of the program remains same the main main part of the program are the matrix vector and vector vector products. Okay. So, this is how we, will, we showed in, in little detail how programming of uh, the iterative solvers can be done and in similar way we you can explore more to spend some time and uh, look into the codes also many, many number of codes are available online as open source softwares. We can uh, write the computer programs all for uh, even for a very large size matrix using this algorithms. Thank you.